Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 we continue the gospel of Luke then said Mary unto the angel how shall this be seeing I know not a man now we go back to what Zechariah said in verse 18 and Zechariah said unto the angel whereby shall I know this for I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years well we went back and you can get the video or the audio what happened to Zacharias has happened before this is no new thing on the sun matter of fact it is the foundation of the Jews Abraham and Sarah Abraham being a hundred years old and Sarah being in her 90s I don't I would not think that Zacharias is that old he may maybe I don't know now Mary's question in 34 how shall this be seen I know not a man this has never happened before angel just told her she's going to be impregnated she's going to have a son he has explained to her the work of God yet going to be the next verse and she's like well, wait a minute in verse 31 it says behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb it hasn't ha it's not talking it has happened and it says thou shalt yet future Mary says, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? I'm not married. Joseph and I, or anybody, I have not had sexual relations with. It's a virgin birth prophecy. We're going to see in the next verse. Pregnancy without a man. Again, in, in chapter 1, verse 18, it has happened before. Verse 34, it hasn't happened. Mary is also responding to the angel saying, listen, I am going to have proper marital relations. This can't happen until after I be with my husband. Now today, in the public school system, you know, you can have a baby, and they show them all the ways to have a baby. They'll go right out and practice their homework assignment. And then you wonder why you have illegitimate children out there. Mary puts the brakes on it. Hey, I haven't been with a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, Show you what you I have not known a man. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest, capital H, shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing Mary is not the mother of God. Thing God's a person. What's it say? The old, I forget which I forget which minor prophet, but it said it is not God that thing is the human side of Jesus Christ the holy thing which shall be born of thee which 
be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now in verse 35 you have the subject is the Holy Ghost. That's the subject. It's not man. Get that. No sperm. But power. No scientist. But the power of God. God is so powerful. He can do what man cannot. Well, man makes a test tube baby. Yeah, he uses an egg from a woman and he uses a sperm from a man. He can't minus either or because he's not going to get anything. Well, he didn't use the sperm of a man. He got Okay, you may use the sperm from an animal. You need a male and you need a female. God says, you want to know how much a God I am? Remove the male out of it. Male plus woman equals child. Male or female. Alright? Two males don't equal a child unless you adopt one. Two females don't make a child unless you adopt one. God. No male plus a female equals my son. Scientists and Satan cannot do that. When God and Satan is having a battle in Exodus over the gods of Egypt, God calls down to Moses and Aaron and says, Produce lice. Now, up to then, the magicians have been doing The magicians changed the water to blood. And Pharaoh says, Magicians do it. And they did it. What a stupid thing to do. You add more blood in, in, to the water. But when it comes to the contest where produce life, Where did those look? I mean, where did the, the, the lights come from? It came from, I believe, it was the dust of the ground. Or the ashes of the furnace. One of those two things. Moses and Aaron brought the, whatever it was, and here are the lights. And the magicians are brought forth, and they, the Bible records they could not. God's power, he can take dust and make man. He can take dust or ashes and make lice. He can take an unfertilized womb and make it fertilized. It's only going to happen once, my friends. This is never going to happen again. It has never happened, and it will never happen. I don't care what God's proclaimed at their virgin barn. It has only happened once. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody else is imitated, which Jesus said, be aware there will be many to come in my name and say they've done my works, even before he was born. Now, there's either two things about that. One, they were written after Jesus was born, which I, I defy, unless it's, you know, the religion started after Jesus, which... Or there were, there were people that understood the Bible long before Jesus showed up and understood the virgin birth where the Jews didn't even understand it. You know what they say about Mary to Jesus? At least we be, be not born of fornication. John chapter 8. They denied the virgin birth by saying that. They proclaim, what, listen, I know not a man. And then they turn around and tell Jesus in chapter 8 of John, well, we, born, we be not born of fornication. They just called Jesus mother a hussy. Nothing new under the sun. Jesus Christ was of God 
and no man. Jesus Christ was not man-made. To overshadow is to throw a shadow over, to shelter, to protect. Explain it. I can't. I don't know. I don't have enough information as of yet. If there is information. I don't know how you can put a shadow over where a woman's womb is dark. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of flesh and guts and gooeyness and muscles and skin and tissue around that uterus. God put that thing in a pocket for the baby. But there was an overshadow. If you want me to say something, and I'm not completely sure about this, God is light, so when God entered into that womb, there was light. I, but I don't know. So Acts 5.15. Acts 5.15. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. So they threw all the dead, uh, dead people. They threw all the sick people in the streets and Peter would walk by if his shadow, thinking his shadow would just pass them, they would be healed. And maybe some of the dead people do. That's an overshadowing where that's a shadow as you're walking by in the sunlight and, you know, however you want to describe it like that. Again, I said there's no light unless God is light inside of a womb. Now, Exodus 33:18. Exodus 33:18. I mean, if you expect me to have all the answers, I don't. I just have the Bible and the knowledge that God has given me. And there's some things I don't know yet. There's some things I don't know. I'll never know. Exodus 33:18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Well, that's funny because the angel just told her what the name is going to be. Here's the name and here's the overshadowing. Exactly how the angel proclaimed it to Mary. So what we're going to read from 18 to 24 it shows up in Mary being told about her pregnancy of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is what is to the both of the story? Again, I don't know, but adhere to it and acknowledge it. And proclaim the name of the Lord. That that's what the angel did before thee. They both had the same thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious upon Mary. Zacharias ended up with a dumb no. And will show mercy in whom I will show mercy. How many young ladies were there of Mary's age in all of Jerusalem? Of the seed of David. One woman was chosen. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. Mary couldn't see the face of God. One day she's going to give birth to, a, to a, a male and she will see the face of God in human form. For there shall no man see me and live. 
And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory pass by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back part, but my face shall not be seen. And he said, I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. That's the overshadowing. As I go by you, I will put my hand, and the shadow is caused by the hand. This shadow prevents Moses' death. The shadow with Mary's womb brings forth life. This is not God's, back to Luke, this is not God's and, and humans as the Romans, Greek, and Babylonian religions in their mythology. You know, God comes down from, uh, from heaven and has intercourse with a woman and she produces a God child. That's not it. There is no sexual relations at all involved in Mary for Jesus. That comes later when Jesus is born and she gets with Joseph. They meet together, become husband and wife, and have other children. Mary has no sex. The holy thing, the sanctified thing, is Jesus Christ as a fetus. It's a noun. A person, Jesus Christ, a place in the womb, a thing. The birth, the labor, nine months later. Plain, that's plain and simple. I mean, she didn't have a reduced time for pregnancy because she's carrying God. Nine months. Pickles or whatever Jewish women crave, the labor pains, the morning sickness. She still bears the curse of Genesis 3 by will be giving birth to a fetus that is sinless. Explain that one. You can. And behold thy cousin. Elizabeth and Mary are cousins. John the Baptist then and Jesus, I think it's called second cousins. Huh? They're cousins. You get in this big family relationship kind of thing. You know what John said when Jesus showed up? I knew him not. As cousins, John and Jesus didn't get together. And it's funny because if they're cousins, okay, Let's go to chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abba, or Abba, or Abia. Zacharias is a Levite. All right, he marries a woman. Zacharias is not related to Mary. Here, his wife was the daughter of Aaron. 
and her name was Elizabeth. We run over back to what we just read. Thy cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth is of the daughters of Aaron, Levi. Mary, we're going to learn in a couple of chapters, is of David. There had been an intermarriage there somewhere in the family. Because you got Levi and you got Judah as cousins. There's a little interesting note there. Thy cousin Elizabeth, shall, she shall also conceive a son. That, that, she has also conceived a son in her old age. You have the very foundation of Jewish religion, Abraham, Sarah, the old age, and this is the sixth month with her. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. He must increase and I must decrease. Who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Where's the question? And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Where's the question? You say, what question? Verse 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken with the age. The angel tells Mary, Thy old cousin, that was barren, is now with baby. And Mary's like, okay. You see any doubt there? The father had doubt, the priest had doubt, but Mary did not. Isn't that interesting? John and Jesus were blood relatives. Elizabeth was of Aaron, chapter 1, verse 5. Mary's of Judah, chapter 3, verse 33. We'll get to that. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. The barren is the recap of Jewish history of Isaac and John the Baptist, a miracle pregnancy, and senior citizen parents. Now, except for the miracle pregnancy, everything has been from Genesis to now. And we went through... You go back to these lessons. We went through all the children that were pre-named, and they were they, their mothers were barren. And you liken those women at the point that they were barren, they became pregnant. They were all type of Mary. See, it was Sarah, not Sarai. Sarai said, "Hey, go go have sex with another woman, okay?" It was Sarai that, that innocently laughed at the fact, oh, I'm going to be pregnant. But then she believed because it happened. Rebecca went to the Lord as her gynecologist. Why not? What the heck is going on with these, these two children in my womb? Actually, she didn't know she had two children. She felt this great pain in her womb. She wanted to go see God. And God said, you got two children, and they're, and they're fighting. You imagine, If it was that bad in the womb, can you imagine those two children growing up that you don't hear about the years, the missing years of, of, of uh, Esau and, and uh, uh, Jacob? Man, if they fought in the womb. Can you imagine all the time that they had to separate them two? The amazing things that the, that the Bible does not tell us. But you've got to semi-read between the lines. Verse 37. 
we read, For with God nothing shall be impossible. The pregnancies of Sarah, Rachel, Hannah, and the virgin birth. Impossible. Psalms 89 35. Psalms 89 35. Psalms 89 35. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. What's the impossibility? He told David, There shall not want your the throne, your throne shall not want a child not to sin on. But with Jeconiah he says, Oh earth, 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 here and write this man childless. Now we're going to come up in chapter 3 of Luke. We're going to read David's name again in the genealogies of Mary. You read about David in the genealogies of the adopted father, Joseph. In Jeremiah it says, Oh, oh earth, write this man child is. That is the virgin birth. Because God said, listen, I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm just trying to be frank and to the point. When God said in Jeremiah, O oh, earth, write this man child, there will be no more sperm that will produce a king that will sit on David's throne. So guess what? It had to be the virgin birth. Revelation 2.27 Revelation 2.27 And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as a vessel of a potter. They shall they be broken to shiver. Even as I received of the Father, I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. This is the throne of David, being seated by the Lord Jesus Christ. But oh, 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 here. Again, I'm going to say it again, and if you don't like it, it's a simple truth. No sperm will produce a king of David's seed to sit on that throne. The virgin birth. No how and no way could Mary be the chosen vessel and be with a man. No way. First Samuel fifteen twenty nine. First Samuel fifteen twenty nine. Impossible. Fifteen twenty nine. First Samuel. And also the strength, capital S, of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. It's impossible, as we're talking about this, read it again. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. God cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. Numbers 23.19 Numbers 23.19 Now look at the impossibilities of God. God is not a man. When you talk about Jesus Christ. Has Jesus Christ been born yet? That he should lie. 
God is not like man. He is not a liar. Isaiah 65, 16. We've got a record set down. We need to look at God's attribute. Acts 65, 16. And he who blessed himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from my eyes. What's it say there twice? It says the God of truth. Hebrews 6.18 We're not going to go any further in Luke till we establish a fact. What we're reading is not a lie. God cannot lie and will not lie. Impossible to lie. We're going to see. Luke, I mean, excuse me, Hebrews 6.18. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Titus 1.2. Titus 1.2. Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Now look at this one. Look at this verse. Read this verse, Christian. In hope of eternal life. You got hope of eternal life? Which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now, back to Luke chapter 1. Why do we go through that? Verse 37, for, the, for with God nothing shall be impossible. This virgin birth is not a lie of God. It's the truth. Whether man will believe it or not. Now the subject is the pregnancy. Look at Genesis 18.14. Genesis eighteen fourteen. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time point I will return unto thee. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. The context is the pregnancy. It is vital. Why did God have Sarah 90 years old to have a baby? One to be a miracle. And one that no one else could do it but God. Isaac is a miracle child that no one could step in and say, we did it. Even the fact is when, when Abraham sinned and went to Sarah, uh, went to Hagar, his name was Abram. It was not Abraham. So when time comes out with a magazine and says uh, Judah, Judaism and, and Islam are of the same father, Abraham, they are lying. Yes, the same man. But Islam is of Abram. Ishmael. The Jews are of Abraham, Isaac. God changed the name. And we could assume that Hagar was a young woman, somewhere at a young age. She was a young lady. Sarah's 90 years old. You can't put Ishmael and Isaac together and say that they have. And that woman who had a baby 90 years old. 
Her great 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 granddaughter is going to come along and she's going to have a baby with no man. Another miracle. And just before this baby was a miracle, her great 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 granddaughter, who is cousin to the one who's going to have a baby of a miracle, this happens to have the same situation that her and Abraham had. There were two old folks and they had a baby. So Isaac is a type of John the Baptist and he's a type of Jesus Christ. The context is vital. Luke 1. Luke 1, 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And what is the impossibilities that he used? He uses a woman's womb. So what 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 do you get today? What is Easter? It's Esther. Easter. Ishtar. A woman who produces many Easter eggs, colorful eggs. You gotta kill the rabbit. And what, 96 breasts or whatever it is on her chest so she can produce all these children. It's where the sexual religion comes from. It's an imitation of what God has done as the truth. That it cannot be copied. And will not be copied. God has a lock, stock, and barrel when it comes to creating life. And God took off the picture one day and said, I'm going to do it without a man. I have that power. God has power over the womb. It takes one sperm. But see, there's a problem. A big problem. When it comes to that male seed, the sperm, inside the woman, she has things going on too. In her defense of her body, there are many actions that are countering and fighting against that sperm. God made pregnancy very difficult. And the end run, we read in the Bible... What do we read in the Bible? Do you know that children are a heritage of the Lord? And we are in a state today that children are being aborted. I'm going to leave it just like that. You are removing the life of a heritage of the Lord that's been guided by God. Man produces the seed. The woman's body fights against that seed. And it takes one. Actually, it takes a whole bunch to reach the egg. With the work what's left over after all the defenses of the woman, one needs to get in. With all that, and you may be able to do that in a Petri dish. You may be able to inject a woman to help her get pregnant. 
And yes, man can do that with technology. I cannot deny that. But God said, I'm going to look over to 2014, 1980, or whenever it began. I'm going to overlook that, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what man cannot do. I'm going to remove man out of the equation. I'm not going to lie. It's impossible. It says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And what verses did we run about? It is impossible for God to lie. Do you get those two contexts there? So let me ask you a question. I'm a Christian, really. Do you believe in the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ? No, I don't. Can they be a Christian? For what we just read tonight? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because you'll be calling God a liar. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand at the, at the great white throne judgment. I know how I picked that throne. I will say either or, usually. I would not want to stand at the great white throne judgment, about to be cast off in hell for all eternity, and have God say, why would you call me a liar? You know the greatest gift outside of Jesus Christ for salvation that God gave? When he made a creation that had a womb to produce life. Every womb, well, no, let me, every egg that's fertilized, I believe is life. As soon as that egg is fertilized, that egg, that life, will populate, here we go, you want to get an abortion issue, will populate heaven or hell. That's how serious pregnancy is to God. And one day God told Mary, came across Mary, came to Mary with the Holy Spirit, that holy thing, and says, I'll defy everything to happen to show you how powerful I am. Power. And impossible for me to lie. There's nothing impossible for me. I'm going to make a woman pregnant. Are you ready for this one, guys? Ready for this scientist? I'm going to do it without a man, without sperm. God is the creator. Try having the Big Bang do that. Now, either you guys say, God is the creator. Or the Big Bang, and we're trying to produce a baby without man. Or God's a liar. Those are only three things you can do. And salvation rests upon what we just read tonight. The virgin birth. And it's important because what did the Jews say to Jesus in John chapter 8? We be not born of fornication. What did they just do? What did they just say? They just said God was a liar. You realize that? When you read John chapter 8 and say, We be not born of our case, they said that Mary, his mother, had sex with a man. That's a big mouthful. 